hypothesize that this flower right here has an anthocyanin uh, light sensitive promoter and that's why the the tip of the petals which were exposed to light are purple whereas the petals near the center or even the end of the petal near the center is white because it did not have any light uh, exposed it didn't have any light exposure so what we're going to do is we're going to use this aluminum foil to cover one of these buds and we are going to wait a few days for the flower to bud and we're going to open the aluminum foil to see if the flower is white or if it looks like this. If it is white then we have more evidence to believe that there is a light sensitive promoter in the genome. So I'm just going to take this and gently cover the bud. Dependence on light for anthocyanin synthesis can be general or specific to a developmental stage. If it is general, as is the case in this cultivar, it will emerge from the tinfoil wrapping mostly white. As it is exposed to light, however, it will become pigmented. This demonstrates that pigment synthesis is not confined to a specific stage of this flower's development. An example of stage light dependence is seen here. The oldest petals at the outer edge were briefly exposed to light before the bud was covered with tin foil so they produced anthocyanin pigment. The inner petals were not exposed to light, so they did not produce anthocyanin pigment. Even after being exposed to light, they did not appear to begin producing pigment, indicating that pigment production may be limited to early stages of petal development in the Rock Run James varietal. Another way that light can affect pigmentation is by photobleaching. Anthocyanins, like most pigments, can be degraded by light. These four examples of the Rock Run James varietal are at different stages of photobleaching. The one with the least exposure to light is nearly completely red, while the one with the most light exposure has lost a good deal of pigment. The dependence of this effect on light can be tested the same way as we tested light-induced pigment production. pH also has a large effect on anthocyanin color. Anthocyanins will be in different forms depending on pH, each with a different color. The mixture of these compounds will lead to different absorption characteristics. Therefore, although it is normally acidic, even small variations in pH of the pigment containing vacuole can have a large effect on plant color. These cuvettes contain flavonoids extracted from different dahlia cultivars with acidic methanol. Notice how the colors change from red to blue or green when base is added. Of particular note is how some of the pale white or yellow cuvettes become orange, indicating that they likely contain chalcones. Soil pH can affect flower color without changing the pH of the pigment vacuole. These two hydrangeas are grown at different soil pHs. As discussed before, their anthocyanins are complex with metal cations, specifically aluminum. The aluminum must be in solution for the plants to be able to take it up, and aluminum solubility in water is highly dependent on pH. Similarly, although some plants may have genetically programmed pigment expression in the vascular tissue, there may also be an environmental effect. If the plant has inefficient nutrient uptake, tissue nearest to the vascular tissue will have the most color. Temperature can also play a large role in pigmentation. Here we see that corn exposed to warmer temperature in the left-hand columns experienced more permutation, repression of the R allele, than corn exposed to cooler temperatures in the right-hand columns. Additionally, frequency of excision of some transposons has been linked to temperature. This demonstrates that many environmental factors can influence flower pigmentation.